Hi, my name is Nick Kravoniak and I'm a taxidermist with the Vivid Taxidermy Studio here in Bloomingdale, Ohio. Due to changing regulations pertaining to chronic wasting disease laws in cervids uh, all around the country, uh, transportation of your uh, trophy is changing and we need to go over how to properly skin out your deer's head. This is applicable to any deer species really. You could do anything from a pronghorn antelope to a bull elk to a moose. Uh, you're really not going to change. It's just going to change on scale. Uh, we want to be able to preserve uh, the hide properly so that your taxidermist has a really good base to start with um, so that you can still uh, keep your memories vivid. It's important for a shoulder mount, which is what we're going to be basically working at with here, to preserve plenty of the armpit area and brisket area. Uh, it's been commonly said for many, many years that we need to leave plenty of the cape for the taxidermist. That's right, but you need to leave plenty of the correct areas of the cape. And what is really important is that armpit and brisket area. So as you can see on this cape here, the brisket starts in the middle of the chest here and comes all the way down and curves back in, forming the armpit. There's no cuts made through the armpit, and as you can notice, the hair patterns vary wildly in that area. So, fixing those and cuts in those is very difficult. This has been caped properly and is ready to be skinned for a mount. You don't need many tools for this process. Simply, a flathead screwdriver. I like to use some sort of replaceable blade system. Uh, I like to contact the skull a lot when I'm making cuts uh, so as to not cut through the hide. And if you are in the field and you're using one knife, uh, you're gonna probably uh, dull that thing pretty quick. Uh, so I, I like a replaceable blade system. Another item that you'll need is a tape measure. You will need to take one measurement for your taxidermist. At the end of the process, you're going to need some sort of saw to move the antlers, unless you're purely going to do a skull mount and then no cutting is required. Measurements needed for your taxidermists are few. Only one is really required, and we want to measure from the corner of the eye to the tip of the nose. This measurement is much more accurate if taken while on the skull before it's skinned out. I usually use a set of calipers but I don't expect you to bring a set with you so just place that zero mark right there at the corner of the eye and bring it right to the end of the nose. Right to the center. This is a seven and a half inch eye to nose which is normal for a mature white tailed deer. going to write that down and save it for your taxidermist for reference. He will appreciate it. Any other measurements that are required can be taken by the taxidermist from the cape that you give him after you finish this process. There's two ways to make your initial cut at the top of the deer's skull. The most universally used is a short Y incision. For a short Y incision, your first cut will take place right at the back third of the antler burr and it will run in a V shape. When making your cuts, do not cut over top of the hair. If you do that, you're gonna cause a visible hair pattern change that's gonna show up in your mouth. So we're going to separate the hair with the back of the blade. Start at the bottom of the V. And now that your blade is under the hair and cutting with the hair, you're going to go to the back of the burr. You'll be able to feel your blade hit the back of the burr. I can feel that there. I'm going to separate that and make sure that my cut is finished. We're almost there. I've hit the back of the burr. Now that's a perfect example of why I like using something with a replaceable blade. I want to feel that blade hit the back of that burr. Now you'll see that will lay down without any of the hair being cut 
right back into place when we sew it. Now, we'll do the same thing on the other side. Starting at the bottom portion of your V, you're going to go the opposite direction, back towards the antler burr again on the opposite side. Making sure to cut from the inside out. We want to hear that blade come up against that antler burr because then we know we're there. Now we've separated everything right through the middle of the skull. That will be your initial cut. After your initial V-cut is made, you're going to pull your hair back, expose where you've made your initial cut, and you're going to go to the middle of your V. As you can see that shape, you're going to go in the middle of your V, make sure that your cape is laid out flat. You're going to go on a straight line down the back of his neck. until the end of the area where you stop skinning. Always cutting from the inside out. Now you'll notice that I am using a back and forth motion to cut through here. What I'm not doing is removing my knife, putting it back in, continually making cuts. This will cause a zigzag pattern that will cause an inconsistent seam when your taxidermist sews the hide back together. Now that cut has been made, and we'll move on to the rest. Our initial cuts have been made, so now we're going to skin the neck head area, just like we would from the shoulders to the head to get to where we are right now. Tension is your best friend. So always pull on the hide and you'll see that you're going to expose this fascia that connects in connective tissues. We don't want to leave meat on the hide so we're going to need to cut right along those connection areas. This is going to help your hide freeze faster for transport. It's also going to result in less work for your taxidermist and less chance of a hole being cut due to additional fleshing of the hide. After I've skinned down to the side of the neck, I've brought it all the way to the base of the skull where the ear butt, which is the muscle group that controls motor, motorization of the ear, is connecting to the skull. On a clean skull, you can see where the ear butt connects and that it sits right up against the antler burr, like so. We're going to make a cut leaving all of this muscle tissue connected to the ear. We want to make our cut right where the muscle starts to turn on the back of the neck. We're going to make our cuts towards the skull. Like I said, I like to make contact with the skull with my blade. Tension is always your best friend. We're pulling on the ear butt and the ear as we make our cuts. You can see where the ear connects with the skull, just like on the clean skull now. Our next move isn't going to require the blade for the time being. We're going to switch to a flathead screwdriver. It's important when we remove the skin from the skull cap around the pedicles that we don't cut any of this hair. This deer in particular is a short-haired deer and hasn't had time to rub these hairs off on trees. So they're growing over top of his antlers. Perfect example of why we don't want to make any cuts that will leave those attached to the skull. Using a flathead screwdriver, we're going to go to our skin right against the antler burr. And we're going to 
start to push and remove and twist that skin from around the antler burr. It comes off very easily. You're just going to place it right where it meets the antler burr. And you're going to add pressure and twist and just remove it. If you need to, you're going to be cutting between the antlers while you're doing that. Just to reduce tension, which remember, tension is your best friend in this process. So even while removing with a screwdriver, you're going to place tension here and you're going to separate with your screwdriver. You'll then go to the back side of the antler burr, adding tension with your free hand and using your screwdriver to continue to remove the skin from around the pedicle. Anywhere that you find connective tissue along the way that isn't allowing you to remove the skin any further with the screwdriver, add tension, cut towards the skull, never towards the skin. We don't want to put holes in the hide. So anywhere where you find connective tissue that's giving you an issue, you'll cut that out of the way. Always making your cut towards the neck meat or the skull. We have now removed the skin from around the burr. It will lock and key into place when your taxidermist puts it back together. Now that we've removed our ear butt and around the antler burr, we're going to continue tension forward with the hide, making our cuts. Always adding tension. I can't stretch it, stress it enough. Adding tension is very, very important in making sure that you're not forcing the blade and understanding where your blade is being placed. We're getting to the back corner of the eye. This is one of the most important areas to pay attention to. The reason that that is, is that there is skin that needs to be left to, on the hide for your taxidermist to properly mount your deer. It's easy to cut through that skin. We can feel the back of the eye orbit in this manner, but it's much easier with your gloves to place your finger right in the socket of the deer and then you can find your finger under the skin. This allows you not to cut through the back corner of the eye. There is my finger. I'm adding tension now with my finger and pulling forward. I can feel the eyelid with my finger so I know that I'm not going to put my blade in the wrong place because I have my finger as a guide. I'm adding tension and I'm cutting. If you cut into the eyeball, that is not an issue. You may see some fluid, but that shows you that you have definitely made your cuts correctly. In the areas around the face, the jowls, and the bridge of the nose that aren't necessarily um, detail areas, you still don't want to make any cuts, uh, whereas your taxidermist will have to fix those. But uh, you also don't need to spend as much time uh, so, always keep your tension going in a proper direction. In this case, I'm pulling it out away from the skull and I'm making my cuts towards the skull. You can see this is the bottom of the eye orbit. I'm working below it right now, so I don't necessarily need to be as precise. Making sure to properly remove the skin around the eye orbit is a vital step in this process. We've already skinned to the back of the eye orbit, keeping our finger inside of the eye orbit and adding tension away from the skull. We're going to keep our finger in there 
and we're going to remove the skin from around the rest of the eye orbit while adding tension the entire time. Once again, placing our finger into the eye skin, we're going to add tension away and we're going to make our cut and release that now. Always making our cuts towards the eye and towards the skull, not towards the bridge of the nose. Adding tension at all times. Tension shows you where you need to place your, your blade and will help you make less cuts that could lead in the hole. You can see that this is a connection point here. This connection point is what holds your caruncular and the front of your eye to the skull. On this skull here, you can see the anatomy that lies beneath. This is the connection point. You can feel this connection point right there. We're going to have to make a cut but that cut needs to be made on the underside. While adding tension, make your cut inside of the orbital and down while adding tension continually. Now we've released that tension point right here at the corner of the eye. That brings us to our tear duct. Our tear duct is this small crevice sitting below the eye. You'll see that the skin connects on the inside on the bottom side. So making a cut on the bottom is necessary. We're going to place our thumb inside of that crevice and pull in this direction up towards the bridge of the nose. We are going to take our knife blade and cut towards the bottom of the crevice, almost as if we are scooping it with a spoon. When we've hit the bottom of the crevice, we can climb that knife blade up while adding tension, and now we have removed the tear duct wholly from the inside of the crevice without making a cut in it. We're through the tear duct now and you can skin down to the back corner of the mouth. Remember, adding tension at all times. Don't leave the red meat on your cape. It's not necessary. It'll take longer to freeze for your trip home. And when we're past the eye, we don't have to be nearly as careful till we get back down here to the corner of the mouth, which is where we're getting to. We've completed our initial cuts and all we have left is the nose and mouth area. We've removed our ear butt, we've removed the skin from around the antler burr, and we've removed the skin from around the eye. Take the deer, place its antlers on the table, and you're going to open its mouth a little bit. If you need to, you can cut the tongue out so that it's not in your way. Placing your finger inside the deer's mouth, pull on his lip line away from his bottom jaw where you will see these tension points all along his lip where this skin is connected. We're going to cut right along the top of the jawbone as we add tension on the lip, separating that. I'm using my thumb for tension. Right along the bottom of his teeth, and then around on the other side as well. Place your thumb in the corner of the mouth Pull out and feel the bone with your blade as you cut. Do the same thing on the top, adding tension, 
making your cut in the back of the jaw on top of the teeth, removing the skin. He had a scar on his nose too right here. Your deer had a scar right here that was healed over. Mm -hmm. This one has a scar right here. See how it's white and it's changed colors? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an old scar through there. While adding tension, you're going to pull the nose back, exposing the bottom of his jaw, which he did have. He was missing a tooth and had a giant abscess right there. Look at that. That's supposed to be finished right here. Okay, so you pull this back and you're going to make a cut straight back into his nasal cavity. So on this particular deer, I'm showing that he's missing the top portion of his palate. Essentially, he's missing this small portion from here forward. It's broken and gone, probably from taking a tine. And you can see that there is an abscess that's growing on the uh, on the top of his palate and even into the bottom of his nasal cavity uh, due to that injury. It's not abnormal to find things like that and on a deer like this he doesn't have an ear that doesn't have a rip in it and he's got multiple in this one. Scars on his cape, you know, he's, I'm not surprised that he's missing part of his palate and I have seen that before and sometimes when you're skinning these out you don't know that there's an injury because it's not visible from the outside of the hide just like this one wasn't we didn't know that was there until we cut into there so sometimes your knife will hit something and and you'll have uh you'll have drainage come out of it and you don't know why it's there until you start to look and you see that there's injuries on the actually the inside of the deer's mouth injuries to the palate and jaw of a deer, specifically a white tail buck, um, I'm sure mule deer bucks as well, and even elk, anything that's fighting with consistency, they have lots and lots of injuries in their mouths. I don't often see deer fighting with their mouths closed. That tine, that, well, I'm guessing a tine that broke the top of his palate, ended up breaking the tip of his jaw as well um, on the way through. All these teeth are moving independently. Um, because right, the only thing holding them together is this connective tissue. Uh, if you were to clean the skull, these teeth would all end up uh, at the bottom of the boiling pot. I'm going to show where the cuts are supposed to be made first on the skull. This, is go this area that is now void on the clean skull is going to be full of the septum cartilage. You're going to make your cut through that septum cartilage following this bone all the way to the back of it. This will ensure that you're not cutting through any of the proper anatomy on the outside of the deer's nose. Using tension with the hand that you don't have the tool in, you're going to pull the nose back and then you are going to follow that bone cutting through the septum cartilage. I've now reached the back of his nose. So I'm going to make a cut and, and separate the septum cartilage where it continues into the nose here, but we don't need any of that. So we're going to cut through that and then we're going to finish skinning back towards the eyes. Adding tension, we're going to cut through the cartilage, separating it, and then placing our knife back to the bridge of the nose. Now we've arrived here. We just skin back and meet our initial cuts and the cape will be coming off of the skull.
continue to cut from this end all the way to the back corners of the mouths because it's important not to cut through there, cutting the hair. We can see that we're safely past the lip line. So we're going to flip the deer back over and we're going to finish. Pulling the hide forward, you can now see his papalia connected to these muscles. You're going to pull out, cut right through those. Making sure to do that far enough back in the hide as to not cut through the corner of his mouth. So we remove those a good four inches back from the corner of his mouth, leaving it attached to the hide. After you have the cape removed from the skull, uh, all you need to do is take the ears, place them on the inside of the cape where you've made your cuts, like so. Take the nose and the lips and fold them inside themselves. And then wrap your deer like a little burrito. A little deer rito. Into the bag it goes. I like to take all the air out of it. You want to save space in the cooler. While you're doing this, you're probably making room in the cooler by taking beers out of there because you've had a successful hunt. Wrap it up and tie it off. This is going to keep it dry. It's important to keep your hide dry. Moisture and heat are what will cause bacterial growth that will render your hide useless, useless due to slipping. If you're electing to just clean your skull and leave it whole, at this point you're going to remove as much meat as possible and um, you're also going to remove any of the brain matter uh, as per chronic wasting disease regulations. You don't have to clean the skull, but you can't have any brain, brain matter present. Uh, if you're going to mount your deer or have it done for a standard shoulder mount, your taxidermist will only require the skull cap. You've taken the proper measurements off the face for him in the beginning of the video. To remove the skull cap, all we're going to do is we're going to remove some of the main groups of muscle on the top of the skull by adding tension and just placing our knife against the skull and cutting them off. So we're going to cut all the meat right down there to the last vertebrae. Now we've separated that and you can see that right here is the last vertebrae on the skull where the neck connects at the axis. Your taxidermist will know where to precisely cut this, so leaving a little bit more than less is helpful. Start your cut right at the back of the eye orbit. Cut at an angle towards the back of his jaw. Place the deer on his nose, pull the meat back, and you're going to cut below his burrs, making sure to not cut too high, right towards your initial cut. Going to remove the brain matter from the inside of the skull and the meat from the outside of the skull and it's ready and legal for transport. Make sure to have the tag number attached to the skull as well as the cape in the bag. They both need to individually have a tag number uh, so for transport and so that they are made legal. In conclusion, this can seem like a daunting process. Take your time, make sure to add tension to the hide before you make your cuts, and reference the video. If you have any questions, you can contact me on Instagram at Nick Makes Vivid Taxidermy, 
or you can get a hold of anybody on the push page and we'll answer your questions for you. We want you to be able to get your trophy back legally and in a manner that you'll have a uh, memory that'll last a life.